What is up, everybody? It's Frenchie Powell with Permaculture Northeast, bringing you guys a video here from Pennsylvania about Chinese yam. Dioscorea opposita, it's sometimes said, opposita folia, that's more the Indian yam, but in reality, it's Dioscorea polystachia, it seems. So, it's got a couple different names, but it's the Chinese yam is kind of the common name that you'll find. It's actually the only edible true yam that you can eat raw. Um, but we're going to go over some very basic details today as to why grow Chinese yam and what it will look like after its first year of growth. So I've got one right here behind me and we're going to start with that one and then look at some others that we planted from the little ball bills as they're called uh, this spring. See what they look like now in the fall. It is just the beginning of September now. So let me flip around the camera and let's take a look at it. So this is actually our... I would say best Chinese yam. <laughs> it's growing here next to our porch. I grew it here because I will be able to trellis it on our siding here. Um, but yeah, so Chinese yam, the very first thing to know is it is a perennial and it produces a long straight tuber underneath the ground that it'll re-sprout from every single year. But the main reason to use Chinese yam, I think, and these are still small because it hasn't grown entirely yet, but these are little aerial tubers known as ball bills that it uses for reproduction these things will drop into the ground and like a kind of like a potato it'll sprout a new plant and i managed to find some of these plants growing wild along a trail in the uh, dc area and so harvested some that way and i planted them across permaculture northeast here to get these perennial sources of carbohydrates actually growing here on the farm and so this thing is mostly starch. It does have, I believe, some potassium uh, as a benefit there. But it's kind of a perennial starch crop. And if you picture harvesting peas from a vine, here you can harvest little uh, pea-sized potatoes from a vine. Down south, you can get some edible varieties of uh, Dioscorea bulbifera, I believe. Yeah, Dioscorea bulbifera, the true air potato. Um, the wild ones that you'll find are actually toxic. But you can find some edible ones that um, don't have quite as much of the toxic compounds, but they're a lot rarer. But anyway, so this is actually first year growth entirely on this one. This is actually one of our largest ones. But let me take you around the property and show you some of the other ones that we've got going on. All right, so I am on my way to one of our <laughs> Chinese yams that didn't do so uh, so well in the growth this year. But it's really hard to find, if you're working with perennial systems, to find a perennial source of carbohydrates. But with, you know, these true yams, that's a carbohydrate source that's coming back year after year, growing some of those vital calories. But anyway, I am here by our top bar beehive. <laughs> and if you plant from a ball bill, sometimes you'll get uh, first year growth like we saw up by the porch. Sometimes... You'll just get two leaves, um, but that's okay. You know, this guy's got two leaves and a little bit of a vining growth coming up, but I threw a ball bill in there, never saw it come up earlier in the year, and I was like, guess that one was a dud. But it came up at the end, and so he's going to photosynthesize, get some energy, put it into the root system, hopefully come back up in the spring. Let's check out some other ones. So I was actually on our way to one that I'll show you in just a second is by our tomatoes. I remembered there's one more that we got decent growth off of. Uh, we actually have a mulberry, it's really hard to see in this video, a mulberry tree with a grapevine growing using that mulberry tree as a living trellis. And I'm hoping to, original, uh, to, to later get it over onto the cedar post and kind of trellis it across. So at the base of this cedar post, I couldn't resist... <laughs> I got another yam growing here, and this one actually does have a decent amount of growth to it. Uh, let's see, yeah, it's up here. It's sending out another shoot over there, and it goes all the way down. But there is no ball bill formation on this guy for the first year. And these are all, since they come from ball bills, they are all the same genetics, okay? These are all genetically the same. You would have to get seeds to start getting some variety. And all of the plants in North America of this variety, the Chinese yam, are all the same gender. So fun fact there. 
Uh, you're not going to get seeds off of these guys. But sometimes in growing conditions, they do well. This one had a lot more competition, so probably, I mean, it's not going to produce ball bills the first year, most likely if it has a lot of competition. But should still grow. We're hoping for some ball bills next year. Now let's check out the tomato. All right, I'm here in our food forest, and it is a mess. All right, we have dense growth of all sorts of food-producing plants in here. That's a whole nother topic for another day. But I started out earlier this year planting a little ball bill in the ground, and it already had a little bit of growth with it. I started it in a pot, actually, and it sprouted. And I was like, cool, let me put it in the ground. I put it in the ground, we had a late frost, and it died. I was like, darn, I lost it. Um, so time went on, I ended up planting a tomato plant in the, like right next to it. And let me turn the camera around, this is what I ended up finding. Alright, so the wind and actually some birds have kind of ravaged this tomato plant. But I'm still getting some decent tomatoes off of it, so I'm not too worried. Um, but if you look, you'll actually see, there they are, some yam leaves. Now the Chinese yam, even though it has kind of a very classical arrow-shaped leaf, the earliest leaves seem to be very round, um, more rotundifolia. But then as they mature, they kind of get their classic arrow shape. And this one actually starts here and has used the tomato vine as its host. And so its vegetation just completely disappears into the tomatoes and it continues on who knows where. So again, I'm not expecting, here's another leaf, uh, any ball bills off of this one. If I dug around, maybe, but I really don't. Yeah, no, here's the, here's one of the ends of it. Um, so yeah, it's got tiny, if you can see those, tiny little white dots. That's where the ball bills will end up uh, growing. <laughs> but we'll see. I'm not expecting those to mature before fall. So yeah, that's a that's another year. Next year, after this tomato vine dies and the foliage dies back, I'm going to put an actual trellis here for it. And uh, it'll continue on with the rest of the food forest and... Maybe I'll trellis it up into that black walnut as it grows. So, yeah, that's that one. Okay, so it actually just started raining as I was finishing up filming. So back here on the porch, got the little yam down there. Um, but yeah, that has been an image just kind of showing you guys the first year growth of what Dioscoria polystachia looks like. So if you are interested in growing it, see if you can source some ball bills to grow your own. Uh, a great source would be... Like I said, I found mine wild. So in some areas, you'll be able to find some ball bills growing wild. Just really get really good on that identification. But there's not too many lookalikes up here in temperate climates. Uh, otherwise, you can go to Food Forest Farms. I'm not really related to them. There's no affiliate links. But they have great content. I'm really happy with the plants that I buy from them. So check them out. Um, otherwise, yeah, grow your own. Have, you know, little ball bills that you can harvest every single year. I mean, I've planted these guys once. And they're going to be producing food for me for countless years to come. All right. And if I'm ever done with a plant in a certain area, I can dig up the root at the end of the season and use the yam itself. And so we'll be checking back in in future videos in uh, eh, maybe a year or so. <laughs> um, but in future videos to see what these yams continue to look like as they grow. So be sure to subscribe, comment if you've ever grown these plants before or have any input of your own. And so... Anyway, that's today's video, guys. Frenchie, out.